Hello everyone, it's Fadi Kudir here with another episode of Canada on the Rocks and we are joined today with Hirayer Schnorhokian. What a full name that is. It is. It's actually Harry. It's probably easier that way. Harry, thank you so much for joining us, man. Thanks for having me. Tell me a little bit about the name, actually. Oh, the name. It's Armenian name and uh, it's uh, pronounced Harayer. Schnorhokian. It's a tongue twister. It is, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Everybody calls him Harry, though, just that it's a lot easier. Yeah. And he's, uh, you know, he looks a lot more like a Harry. He's very handsome. Oh, <laughs> I don't know about that. But. Uh, so Harry here comes with Genevian Watch Gallery. Correct. And they've been in the market since 1959. Tell me a little bit more about where it started. You mentioned your dad was in the business. Correct. Actually, my dad and my uncles were in the business as well. So, And a lot of their children went into the watch business. Uh, my dad himself started in 1959. Now it's uh, 65 years. It's wow. Be. Well, he, he's retired, obviously, for a while. But he did start the business. And I grew up in his uh, watch shop and watching... All the interactions, all the watches coming in and out. And you don't realize it at the time, but it uh, puts a seed in you. And that's uh, eventually I went in the same direction yeah. through a different journey. That's interesting. So tell me about that journey. So my dad's shop was great. It was very interesting for me to see the people that came in and out of his shop, the goings on and the way he dealt with people and the trust they put in him. And I guess that influenced me a lot more than I thought it did at the time. And eventually we moved to Canada and I went into a different direction. I, I graduated in civil engineering from Montreal, but life uh, brought me back into watches. So in uh, 2001, I went to China through uh, my cousins. They asked me to help them there in the watch business. They mm -hmm. were into more of the lower end watch business, the mass quantity. And w I did. It was a great experience, a few months. And eventually that led me to have a, a, an interest into developing uh, watch brands and helping watch brands grow their collection, yeah. design, development, manufacturing, that sort of things. And watches is like that. Once you get into it, you, you, you're oh, they're so addictive. It's addictive. You can't get out. It's, uh, <laughs> and it's also like it, it tells you something about the man when you see the watch he's wearing. It does. It does. So uh, for the watch, you have it tells of your choice. So uh, character, yeah, choice, character. Exactly. How you how you choose items and everything. But not always, but in a lot of the cases it does because the watch the person is wearing will reflect his pattern of thought, his taste, his uh, sometimes budget, sometimes not because some people wear watches they can not really, they shouldn't be affording mm -hmm. and uh, others, they can afford higher end watches, but they go for a little bit lower priced watches just because of the design, the history. So it's very, very interesting. The watch market is, is and the brand, it's so diverse. It tells you a lot like the watch you're wearing. It's almost like an apparel now but with a mechanism inside. It's truly, I don't know many things like that in, in this size that can, that can tell somebody about the person plus colors, leather straps and so many things that go with it, yeah. presentation yeah. and stuff. Yeah, it, it feels like more like a like when you look at somebody's watch, it's, like, it's kind of like their signature in a way. I would say so. I yeah. would say so. And uh, a lot of people, especially recently, and they go into where having multiple watches because watches have become more affordable, especially in the last, I would say, 10, 15 years. And you can find a lot more quality, good quality watches that can compete with the big names which we call micro brands. Mm -hmm. And the quality is amazing. They have a cult following because they have an authentic history. They don't just hire, let's say, cele celebrities. It's nothing wrong with hiring celebrities to represent you, but they don't only do that. They actually have a history uh, themselves. And they put forward the brand that they believe in, and they check the quality sometimes even more than the big brands because it's their baby. And... Uh, from that, you see a lot of different variations in watches, surfer watches, diver watches, uh, elegant watches, and sporty. And uh, there's just too many. And yes, it does show a person's signature, his taste, but people are tending to buy more watches. Like one person would buy five, six, seven watches to have because yeah. it's more affordable. Uh, a lot, Yeah, there's a lot of collections, if you will. Like a, It's trending more and more from what I've seen lately is, uh, you know, you've got... So and so has got a collection of watches, and that's his thing. And so, how did you decide to come back to it? Like, you know, you, you did two thousand and one. You said your cousins, but yeah. 
Yeah. What was the urge for you to go, you know what, this is what I want to do. I don't want to do civil engineering anymore. Yeah, I, uh, I worked in civil engineering as a student for, uh, for a couple of years and uh, as a student. And, but it was, a, it was a summer job, but it was almost like I could have gone into full time. It just, it wasn't utilizing any of the things I enjoyed naturally, mm -hmm. if you will. But naturally, whether it was the family history, me growing up around watches all my life, or whether it's, uh, my mother is also a uh, designer. She's a jewelry designer. Having that a little bit in me, maybe, I, I, I enjoy a lot about developing watches, f watch collections for different brands. And I made a few samples, I made a few drawings, and people, like brands started, you know, or ordering them. And that's how it started. I'm like, okay, the, the designs I'm making, it's kind of like it's being, it's, it's selling. And people are, their brands are enjoying collections I'm presenting them because I'm very, I, I like very much the details in a watch and that they don't necessarily find that in a manufacturer. Yeah. So I enjoy that. that. That became my niche. And once you find a niche that you enjoy and it kind of like, you start, you, you feel comfortable. Oh, well, that's the thing too. Like it's, uh, you see this quite often. Like somebody would be, for example, studied something and then they really loved it and this and that. And then they realize, you know what, this is not my, my thing. My passion is here, and it, it sounds like it sounds like you found your calling here with uh, with watches. Now, does that mean that you're always on time? <laughs> <laughs> Rarely. <laughs> Rarely. <laughs> Rarely. Mm. And I get that joke all the time from my friends. One of my closest friends, he, he's always on time, very strict, on the clock, like a Swiss trains we call him. But yeah, uh, yeah, no, I'm I'm getting better, <laughs> getting better. So, what are some of the, the most interesting watch brands that you've worked on? A lot of them I don't talk about publicly, bec not because of any, it's because I've signed NDAs and everything, but a few of them we did not sign NDAs that you would know is Dolce Cabana. We manufactured for them. DNG also, which is their ca second category brand, mm -hmm. both of them, as well as their, they have another brand in Italy called Braille, which is the same company that had the Dolce Cabana license. And we worked with them. Uh, that would be one. We worked with a few celebrities uh, in the United States, quite high-end celebrities, and they made their own collections. They came to us. We developed the whole collection for them. They went on to to sell quite well, and uh, some didn't because that part belongs to them. Yeah, I wasn't part of that at that time. But recently, I'm going into that part as well. And it's interesting that you mentioned the NDA. Maybe we'll we'll just mention to the audience what an NDA is. It's basically a non-disclosure, right? Especially in situations like this, yeah. when you have big brands like like those, they don't necessarily want to have or show people like where the design come from because at the end of the day, it's uh, it's their sort of proprietary information that they want to keep to themselves. Hundred percent. It's like having a a great like a great restaurant. And you don't see who's the chef in the kitchen a lot of the times. Now, they're very, very high in restaurants. They show you. But a lot of times you don't see who's cooking in the kitchen. And we're the people. We were that business. They're not going to sell the recipe, no. You're not, they're not going to sell the recipe. They're not going to introduce you to this guy who makes this sauce. This guy. They don't show you that. And uh, that is fair. That is fair because they are putting in the front end of the brand. So, And I don't also, we were participating in many shows in between 2006 and 2009 and then I just stopped participating in Switzerland and also in Hong Kong even in Middle East but because the brands we were working with although they would never say it but they they're not comfortable with us showcasing our products publicly mm -hmm. they would much prefer uh, and I prefer like that too, to work with brands in solidarity like a partner and really develop with them confidentially and knowing they can trust us and we trust them. That really created a very long-term uh, relationship yeah. with most of the brands we work with because right. of the confidentiality we keep for them and the trust. Exactly. And that's the thing with businesses. It's all about trust, like a two-way street, right? Like it's not a, you know, like once you get into it, you get in bed with them. It's, it's definitely a way to just keep that business flowing. Uh, by keeping that trust and keeping that NDA, because also an NDA dictates that if you do break it, you're definitely in a lot of heap of, of SHIT, if I want to call it that. 100%. And the larger brands like the celebrities and the bigger brands we worked with, we did sign NDAs. But recently, I've gone into working more, a little bit with more micro brands and not, and, and it's funny how it changes. You kind of have an NDA, but it's just a handshake. And people are surprised. People, competitions, people who, they're like, how are you working with, you don't have a, but you're giving all your production to one guy, 
but how how are you you know uh, how how do, how don't you have a contract? What if he does this? What if you guys do this? But at the end of the day, I believe that if people's if you find the right people to work with, and if their intentions are good, and if their vision for the future is good, you are able to forge that relationship without an NDA, without even a, a contract, and that is a lot more powerful than having any kind of contract mm -hmm. and lawyers and everything, which I don't believe in. I prefer a handshake is much better. Of course, you do your legal homework properly, but uh, between a customer and a supplier, I think that uh, trust is the biggest, biggest yeah. uh, value by far. And so where are you guys, like as far as your uh, manufacturing and all of that, where is that located and, and you know, what sort of storefront do you have today here in Ottawa? Yeah, so I have uh, we, we run two businesses. One of them is the one that I mentioned about uh, building for brands and everything. That's kind of like the, uh, we do that without, uh, just for a few brands. We don't uh, go too far with that. But the storefront in Ottawa is basically uh, started with an online sh store. And it's, it's purely online for the moment. We are hoping we're going to have a showroom and maybe even an offline shop mm -hmm. at some point. We're studying that, definitely. Weighing the pros and cons. But at the moment, what I'm trying to bring is the personal relationship online, which I don't see in a lot of online stores in any industry, yep. whether watches or something else. I see a lot of brands that kind of like make it difficult for you to contact them. And uh, that's fine. That's a strategy they adopt. For me personally, I can only do what comes naturally for me. And that's, I enjoy very much talking to the customers, talking, getting their feedback, good or bad. They say, oh, this watch I don't like, or this is too small, whatever. I love that. I love talking to clients and, and getting to know them because it's nice to do that. It forms a long-term relationship and it kind of continues the legacy that my, my family started, which is basically putting the customer first, but putting that online, which again, you don't see a lot these yeah. days. It's yeah. different, like, definitely different perspective of doing the, the business the way it's, it's supposed to be, especially now with you know the, the future that we're in. It's uh, trying to bring that in online and then really doing it in a different way makes it completely different for you guys. It's just... Uh, 100%. 100%. I think there, that there should... There, there doesn't need to be a compromise between going online. You can do online. You can do good quantity, good, good, good business online with watches while maintaining the service of talking to the client mm -hmm. because they have questions always. What is it? It's online. They don't see it on the wrist necessarily. Like, what is this? And a lot of times they're, they don't even ask because they don't think nobody's going to respond. But the people who do ask, we respond right away. And they're so surprised. They're like, oh, wow, how did you... But I like that. I like that they ask because what's the point of sending them a watch that they're not going to like? Exactly. There's no meaning in that. Especially that you're, you know, most of the time you're wearing that watch at least, at least 12 to 15 hours a day, if not more. Yeah. Uh, some people wear it still in their sleep. I don't know why, but I, <laughs> to me, it just, the second I go to sleep, I take my watch off. But oh, yeah. me too. It's, uh, yeah, like it's something that you're going to have and you're going to have for quite some time. So you really got to like it uh, in a way because again, it's going to be a part of your, your body. 100%. It's part of who you are, like the clothes you wear, the shirt, the, the jacket, the, the scarf or whatever. That is part of it. The wallet, if you still use a wallet, that's all part of who you are and your character. And if you don't like it, how many times a day you're going to look at it and say, I got don't something, like it. I don't like it, and that's the company who sold it to me. You yeah. know? And I don't want to have people that feeling. I, it, the, the growth might be a little bit slower, but I believe it will be a, on a much stronger foundation. If you build slower, but on people who are really satisfied with the product, they 100% believe in you, and they've had a great experience with you. And I don't see the reason why we should rush that into getting, you know, 20, 30,000 suddenly. Half of them are not happy or whatever. I, I don't believe in that. Yeah. yeah. And when it comes to creating a watch for you guys, like what goes into the thinking and the you know, putting putting that model in perspective, if you will, like what, what sort of basics do you have that you have to kind of adhere to? On the store right now, on the online store, what we do a lot of, and you'll see, is that we do collaboration models with brands. So we don't do our own brand yet. So what we do is we, we work with brands that are out there that have a certain history. Some have a certain history, some not. And we try to put our own DNA into it. And a lot of a lot of projects you'll see on our uh, a lot of watches you'll see on our store are in fact limited editions, and they are watches that we have collaborated with the brand owner, and we go to them. We say we saw in the in your history 
in your brand's history that there was a watch you made in 1950 or 1930, in some cases, and we want to bring that back as an homage. Uh, homage is when you, when you kind of uh, pay respect to a model mm -hmm. by bringing it back and you fully uh, tell the story of that model. And, and we did that with uh, one of the brands we work with, Mathe Tissot. We brought back a watch called Type XX, which uh, comes from a Type 20. And Mathe Tissot is a, almost a 150-year-old brand, more than that. And they, they, they were in 1878, I believe they started. Wow. And they were assembling a lot uh, for a long time for the larger brands, Breguet and other Swiss brands. And the new owners, the new owners meaning 40 years ago, they didn't even know. So we went into their archives with them and found out typewritten letters from 1933 from these watch brands to Mathe Tissot about and, uh, and, and that was very interesting for me. And we said, let's bring these models back. And we recreated the model in collaboration with them, limited edition for our stores. And it was very, very successful because people are looking for that. People are not looking for just any watch these days that looks good. Yeah, you can do that in the two, three, four hundred dollar range. But when you get a little bit higher, like thousand, two thousand dollars, you want something with history. You want something that means something, and uh, that's where we came in. So we duplicated the exact watch that Mathe Tissot made in 1954, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. We brought it back. We did another one called MT 1970, a watch they sold in New York in 1970s. We have the, all the articles. And we brought that back very successfully at very good prices. So it's a collaboration where everybody wins. The brand wins because we bring out their history, which they weren't planning on doing probably. And we win because it's an exclusive model mm -hmm. with our DNA in them, with kind of things we go, you, you mentioned what goes into developing it. This is part of it. Our DNA, our interest in that particular brand. And we did the same with German brand also with a couple of others, as where there was a German brand called TW Rula. And they, um, Rula was a, is a city in Germany, in Eastern Germany, which was a watch uh, city they were assembling. But then it went away during the First World War, I believe. And so a couple of young guys from Germany I talked with 20, 20 years ago. I said, why don't you guys do something? German brand watch, you know, you got a good history and everything. And they brought back a brand. They got a small factory in Rula in the same city. And they got assemblers and everything. They start assembly line in Rula in the same city that they used to do in 1920. And the ambassador for that brand they got is the first German astronaut that went to space and wore a watch. We oh, wow. Du we duplicated that exact same watch called Intercosmos, and we, we did it in collaboration with the brand. So, projects of love. Very, you know. very interesting. <laughs> really interesting. Um, one of the things that I've noticed a lot of the watches, you know, you've got the very, very simple watch and the very complicated watch and the, you know, the very elegant and the very sort of basic what sets a watch apart? It's your personal taste, to be honest. It, it, it is what it is. Uh, there was a, I'll give you a few examples, if you will. Uh, there was a person who was uh, going to buy a, a Tissot watch. Uh, and he came to us, he said, I found this watch, it's $2,500. And, and I'm, I'm looking, I, I only want to buy a brand name. I don't want to buy a non-brand name. Mm -hmm. And we said, fine. And it was a friend who introduced me to this person. And then and he, I said, okay, so they've made their mind up. But I, he said, no, take, show them what you do. And then I showed them what we did. We showed them the Type XX. And they were very like, they, they said, no, this is what I want. So once they see that a watch has a bit of a history, a bit of a thought that went into it, it a lot of people, a lot of people, they go in that direction. And when you educate in a way, educate them that this is what went into this watch. They're starting to say, I want something that means something on my wrist. So it has a bit of a history rather than just saying, oh, here's another watch. It's automatic. It's this price and everything. So that's for that category. Other people, they just want a watch for everyday life. They want a watch to go to work and it looks good, you know, and costs two, three hundred dollars, not thousand dollars. They don't yeah. want to pay. But it's the same quality and even the same years of guarantee, sometimes even more than the big brands and you have better service so these days what are people looking for more to have unique products they don't want to be the same as everybody yeah so this you, you we, get, we try to give them as unique products as possible combined with the unique level of service we give them so they feel like the product and the service go together that is what the product is mm -hmm. not just the watch itself so you have the different levels uh, you have a uh, budget is a big decider deciding factor so you have a budget of 
three hundred dollars, you're not going to buy a thousand dollar watch. Or if you have, if you have budget for a hundred, hundred fifty dollars, we have a Spanish brand on the line, have it, and that's something you don't think too much about. You know, you a hundred dollars, one hundred fifty dollars. I get a great looking watch, stainless steel, Japan uh, mechanism inside, and it comes from the creators of Zara watches, for example. That is that history with Spanish leather, wallet, this and that. Yeah. So every brand that we put out there, we try to kind of have something that we believe in that is represented by it. And uh, I'm sure more brands are going to come in our store soon. And uh, Yeah, and yeah. It, it's really like from from the sounds of it, and I mean, I'm not, I'm not a big watch guy myself, but just kind of seeing out a lot of my friends that are into watches and you things like be. that. <laughs> it, it looks like it. <laughs> it's all about, it, to me, it's like it's a fashion statement in a way. It is. In, in a lot of, in all, in, for all intents and purposes, it is. It is. You can have five watches. You can have a, a watch that you want to wear just to go to coffee, just want to read a book or go to, go, go to a coffee shop or meet some friends. There's a watch there. You don't want to spend too much on. And you don't want to worry about too much what's going to happen. There's another level of watches called diver watches. Those are like, you, you go, if you're a diver or you're swimming a lot or this and that or you're outdoorsy a lot, you want to have sapphire glass on the watch which is scratch resistant. You want to have 200 meter water resistant, 300 meter water resistant. We have a watch on our, on our store, which is a thousand meter water resistant. Those are for the hardcore divers. Mm -hmm. And so it is a fashion statement and it is a personal choice, definitely to your lifestyle. And sometimes it's a choice to the lifestyle you would want to have, but you can't. So we have watches called, the uh, brand is JDM Military. It's a relatively new brand and they have like all Sapphire Crystal, five years warranty, Swiss made. And under $300, a lot of them. Wow. And it's a great item. It comes sometimes with Swiss Army knife. It comes with all these gifts. And yeah, each watch is a fashion statement, but also to your changing lifestyle. You know, you want to do an outdoor stuff, you put your outdoors watch. You want to sit at the office, you put a regular watch. You want to go for a formal dinner or you're going out with friends or a date or you put a more high-end watch. It's 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 your it's what you feel like wearing, just like the clothes you wear. Yeah, it's exactly. And like what are your thoughts? And I'm, this might be a little bit uh, sort of, you know, infringing on what you guys do in a in a different way. But what are your thoughts on uh, watches like Apple watches and uh, all of those like smart watches? Yeah, those are great. Those smart watches are great. They're they're a different uh, they're a different mood. They're di for therefore there's a certain section of people that buy. The Apple Watches, a lot of people buy Apple Watches and smart watches to that. To that end, I don't, because a lot of people have talked to me about this since they came out about now, what, 12, 13 years ago, I believe, or yeah. more than that, 14 years ago. And when they first came out, I remember my cousin called me on the phone and I was in Hong Kong. He said, the watch business is over. I said, what, <laughs> what are you talking about? He said, well, you know, these watches came out, nobody's going to wear any watches anymore. And other people called me from... And I said, look, 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 the people, you can have a smartwatch. You can also have a regular quartz watch or a mechanical watch or an automatic. So you can have both. There's people that are going to have both. But the people that was going to buy our watches are not going to say, you know what? I'm not going to buy this watch. I'm going to buy an Apple watch. They're two different components. I would say Apple Watch took over more of the market share of the people who were buying more I don't want to say the brands, but the brands that were coming out with more plastic and uh, calculator and, you know, those functional G GPS and they were going in that direction. There's a few brands like that. I would say instead of buying those brands, they would buy an Apple Watch. Mm -hmm. But to completely lose out and say, like, if somebody's going to buy an Apple Watch, uh, they will also buy one of our watches. Uh, it's not it's not mutually exclusive, if you will. In my opinion, yeah, I, think I may be wrong. It serves two different kind of uh, demographic in a way. It it does, it does, and, and in no way an Apple Watch would replace a fashion statement. No more as, uh, it's like you're wearing a shirt, the watch is like a shirt you're yeah. wearing. So that is functional, but this is more aesthetic and more uh, personal taste. It's like wearing a belt, a shirt, a pants, a shoes, it's, it's, it's that category. Apple Watch is replacing uh, a lot of like, if you want to go biking, hiking, and you, you, you're connected all the time. There's a few also disadvantages to the Apple Watch. Obviously, not only Apple, the smart watches. You got to charge them all the time. All your messages are there. You're always connected. Sometimes you, these days you want to get away from yeah, that yeah. and take a break. If it's on your wrist, you're never getting away from that. 100%. And it feels like you're trapped. It feels like I you're mean, trapped. I've got one of those. It, it literally feels like you're trapped 100%, a lot of times. 100%. And, and you're sitting having dinner with somebody. Uh, it's like, hey, uh, you're talking to him. Hey, you have a message. You know, yeah. It's a little bit uh, you're getting your privacy out there and... 
I, I feel it's a bit against nature, if you will. Uh, but it's okay. It's functional as long as you know how to limit it. It's like iPads. You know, your kids have iPads and then you want to limit the time on that. It, that's how I feel about the uh, smartwatch. It's a great thing. It's really a nice, nice thing. But I don't believe at all it will significantly impact uh, in the long run mm -hmm. watches. Because as I'm saying, people are buying more multiple watches rather than they're buying, they're not buying a single watch. If some, some people were buying only one watch and they have the budget for only Apple and a regular watch, maybe, maybe. But people are buying multiple watches. The watches we have most of the time are more affordable than a smart watch. They last longer and Apple Watch is changing every year. Yeah. You know, so. And you mentioned earlier about the quartz and smart watches and all. What are some of the different, you know, uh, differences between watches and like what sort of mechanism they have and like how they work and all of that if you can maybe explain it sure sure uh so watches uh they're historically they're i'm, I'm not going to say i'm an expert in this but historically uh they come from they're micro clocks clocks were the first uh big wheels you know they the clocks used to work and still work actually are a mechanical what we call mechanical it's the pendulum that uh, you know mm -hmm. functions the so that became mechanical watches which we, the old watches used to hand wind them. You need to hand wind them every time. And those are called mechanical watches. They don't have battery and they're not automatic. Now, mechanical watches are what all the old watches were like. They had some electrical and this and that, but the majority of them were mechanical. Then came the battery. The battery watch is what we call quartz watch. So the, that is a much more affordable watch uh, mechanism and you don't need all the wheels all the mechanism inside they took out a lot of that they only left the front end of it which shows the time and they powered it with a battery which you need to change that's fine that's a battery operated watch then they came out with the automatic which is a kind of an if you will an upper grade higher grade of the mechanical watch which has a little rotor in the mechanism so it goes on the motion of your wrist so if you wear the watch it automatically with that motion it's like a pendulum, if mm -hmm. you will, and it charges the mechanism aside. It's pretty cool. So you don't have to hand wind it. Now, what happens if you put it aside for a couple of days? It eventually, it lasts for a lot of them, 36 to 48 hours, some 52. But many, many watch enthusiasts, they have a winding machine where they, I don't know if you've seen them, you put the mechanical watch or the automatic watch on the winding machine and it keeps turning automatically. Uh, while you don't wear it, so it always keeps the time. Oh wow! Yeah, those are the very interesting. Yeah, it's pretty. It's a pretty cool little machine inside a fashion statement. It's pretty nice. Yeah. What are some of the most interesting watches you've ever worked on? Yeah. Okay. Uh, the ones that have a lot. Oh, I don't want to sound cliche, but oh, most of the watches I work on are interesting. The least interesting, I would say, are people who came to us, and they have been a lot, and which I normally reject especially in the last 10 years, that say, well, this is a nice uh, nice design that some other brand did. I want you to do the same. I, I, don't, I don't like that. That's just, that's not our style. Mm -hmm. When you're not adding any of yourself into the project, I don't like to be involved. You got to make a difference. So that would be the least interesting. The more interesting watches are the ones that had challenge. We made a watch which it didn't go into production for various reasons. Not all the watches go into production, but we made a watch which I still have a sample with a wooden propeller on the wooden like an airplane propeller. Oh wow! On the front and one on the back, powering the mechanism to work. Very interesting. So that was one thing we did. We did another watch which was uh, it was built like a submarine, uh, not a submarine. I would say a, a ship porthole they call them portholes the windows that yeah open. and that was like a 12 piece a 12 piece case with a window that opens and it, that, that was and it was automatic and every piece it was mother of pearl it was it was it was great and 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 there's a there's been a few there's been a few like this which are challenges challenges you have to overcome to make the watch and then it makes the watch unique and um, those would be the more interesting ones that stand out but also a lot of the watches that look simple. You put two watches together and they look ver relatively the same technically, but you say, I like this one better than the other one. You don't know why. No, most of them are like, I, I don't know why. They, they look the same. But because the one you chose has gone a lot more detailed thought into it. The indexes, the hands, the thickness of the hands, how the proportionality is between the dial, the hands, each component, and the case, and the curves, and the way it fits on your hand. 
those are the things I like the most. Those are the more challenging and the more interesting things I found the most, where you can make a simple watch look exclusive. That I find it's really challenging. And I find it's the most rewarding, to be honest. So I find this uh, interesting. A lot of people, you know, for history, people that I've been friends with, and they've always, they look at watches as kind of like, you know what, uh, I don't want you to give me a watch as a gift because I feel like you're, we're, the second I put it on, I'm going to start telling the time when we're going to stop being friends. How do you feel about that? Oh, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I've heard that multiple times. Oh, really? Oh, that's, oh I, yeah. I haven't heard that before. It's like TikTok, I, TikTok, our friendship is over. Oh, no, well, that's why with the automatics, you don't have TikTok. You, right, have, the, you have the sweeping hand. But I hadn't heard that one. That is, some people, obviously, people have different... Interesting, yeah. Different beliefs. I've heard also different variations of that in some cultures. They don't like the clock for similar reasons that it could be a countdown to things that like the friendship ending and things like that. But yeah, no, those are those. <laughs> no, Very passive. Yeah, 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 absolutely. With that being said, I, uh, I find like, you know, you, you brought on some watches here today. I want to see some of those watches. Hopefully we can show some of the audience what these are, if that's okay with you. It's okay. Sure, sure. It's okay. I brought them just in case you, you wanted to see some uh, in person and then things like that. I didn't know if we we're going to showcase them. But uh, yeah, absolutely. If you want to. Actually, this is the watch I was telling you about that uh, is a thousand meters water resistant. It's Swiss oh, this made. this is gorgeous. Yep, it's Swiss made. Wow. We have one piece remaining. It's a limited edition. It's got a whole, it, it won awards. Uh, you can see the back, the Swiss logo, the, the red yeah. on the back. And what does something like this go for? So that's the thing. So normally this, something like this would go for four or $5,000. Wow. But we, we don't, we, we, we're not in that, business of over overpricing watches we're in the business of not here to to drive porsches and all these things we're here to bring watches so much better than my I'm telling you i'm telling you my i don't want to say the name but yeah no, you know no, no, so no, much no, better no. than my uh, my watch the watch is on your hand so no the, the the idea is also one of the things we do on the shop is i don't want to overprice watches we're always yeah. giving watches with a slight margin obviously but it's always going to be affordable it's never going to be a quadruple like the the brands now these days they do like crazy pricings so we don't want that we want to give affordable watches this is what about th that one there? which one this one no the one uh yeah that one oh this guy yeah this guy's name is called charlie the collection is called charlie it's from our jdm military it's a sapphire glass chronograph it's a five years warranty swiss made wow and it's a uh, it's got variations in the sense that you got with a leather also comes in leather comes in black so many watches uh comes in a uh, black metal. really cool you got this one with this the also <laughs> <laughs> i got all the watches here yep wow this one is definitely uh yeah it's elegant it's just you know it's simple yeah yet has all the uh you know the different little watches with the date and time and yeah you got a chronograph function in it's there it's a perfect military watch for sure yeah it is it is it is and uh we trying to like these kind of watches in the old days would cost you upwards of eight nine hundred thousand dollars even because just because of the brands mm -hmm. but these days we're able to we're able to have brands which have the same quality that manufacture and assemble in the same factories as those big brands without the high priced other uh, expenses of those brands we bring them like for a so this one here is that price. is that also considered like a diver watch you said that is definitely a diver watch so that is, does that mean that the you know scratch resistance and all of that cool stuff 100 percent, 100 percent. it has to be yeah and it's a thousand meters water resistant which is a thousand i'd never go down I would, a thousand meter but I would it's, stop uh, it's really nine, cool for yeah you know being on the beach and things like that and like uh out on the boat and stuff like that like Absol you don't absolutely and it's a, it's no, a, these it's, are really it's, cool it's kind of you a, might want to take them before i hold on to them yeah it's uh, the thousand meter is also like a kind of a mission statement i usually stop diving at 920 meters but uh, uh <laughs> it's uh you definitely sort of you know what i'm just gonna try this yeah, one on yeah, it try it you. try it definitely turning me on watches here uh, for, for sure it's addictive i'm telling you this way yeah, yeah just yeah just no, the other, sorry this way here yep click and this and then i would wow obviously and then you can definitely uh yeah, you know, short, shorten short, it and we shorten the straps we always uh whatever the client wants we oh, shorten this, it this looks good we put the new battery if that's what you want that's all part of the 
part of the deal. So yeah, it is good, Fatty. It, it looks good on you. You're definitely uh, <laughs> turning me on here for sure. <laughs> My goodness, all these watches. Oh uh, yeah, this is. Uh, I know a few people that would just salivate over this literally <laughs> salivate over this really appreciate your time here harry and uh honestly looking forward to more and more uh i'd love to kind of let the people know about your website if you if you want to take a minute and just kind of let them know sure thanks for having me by the way i enjoyed it and uh so the website is called gdgwatch.com g uh, because it's a spin-off of our uh, of our uh, original store, which was called the uh, Genevan Watch Gallery since 1959. So this is the French version. It's Galerie de Genève. Nice. So that's why it's gdgwatch.com. And everything's there. We got Instagram. We got Facebook. We always try to post things. And, uh, and what, what are you on Instagram? What's your handle? GDG underscore watch. Perfect. No ES, just W-A-T-C-H. Uh, GDG underscore watch. I'd love to, uh, you know, check you out and then and get turned on a little bit more on watches. I really uh, appreciate this. Said, thanks for saying watches. <laughs> that is good. No, I love to. I love to tell you more about them. And uh, and uh, there's just too many to talk about. And it it's, it takes time. But once you put one on your hand, honestly, it's just what's next, what's different, yeah. and what's that. Yeah. And then it's that kind of thing. Especially these days, guys are buying. I find a lot more watches than they were buying, let's say, 20 years ago. Definitely. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks again. Really appreciate it, Harry. And uh, guys, Thanks, thank Fadi. you so much for following us here. If you like what you see, please don't hesitate to hit that like button. And also, if you want to just get more and more of uh, businesses around Ottawa and want to watch a lot more of these episodes, don't forget to subscribe. It's really easy. You just click that subscribe button and go from there. Really appreciate it. Thank you so much and have yourself a wonderful day.